Welcome to the latest Watercolors Aquarium Gallery video brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in beautiful downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan. Today we're going to do a species profile on one of my favorite... Charles? Hmm? We're filming. Oh. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to get distracted by this amazing book, particularly when we're doing a plant profile on <laughs> Cryptosterion, which is, uh, to me, one of the most majestic of the crypt plants. Majestic! It's hard for me to disagree with that. I, I really wanted to try. Um, I might argue Crypt Balance, but that's personal bias. It has that fine elegance to it, I yeah. agree. But Cryptosteriana has really big, almost uh, sword-like leaves. Yeah. They get just a little pink hue on the back of them. Stately. Stately, yes. <laughs> it is a larger Crypt plant. I have them at home in a 90-gallon aquarium, and they definitely make their leaves all the way to the top of the 90-gallon. It's beautiful. That green color is, it's the perfect green. It's a beautiful fill-in mm -hmm. bright background plant. Yeah. That takes over, not takes over, it doesn't grow fast enough to take over. It's so versatile. It's easy under all kinds of different lighting situations. It will grow well under high light. I have it under quite low light and it's doing fantastic. In fact, one of my favorite features about this crypt plant is it's one of the only crypts that I know of that will regularly flower under water. Currently I have, I don't know, seven or eight. I started with two or three crypts, used to be honest, in my 90 gallon at home. There's now maybe seven or eight of them and I have three flowers happening right now at the same time. So my cool. suspicion is uh, with the wet weather that we've been having, my dehumidifier is running extra long in the basement and the temperature in my basement is coming up a little bit. It's apparently native to the Philippines which is a little bit like southwest of where I'm used to crypts coming from. Interesting. That's something that I did not know about this plant. Yeah, that, that was the first thing that jumped out on me. Here. I don't think of collecting freshwater aquarium plants in the Philippines. The right. Philippines is where a lot of really cool saltwater stuff comes from. You yeah. wouldn't even yeah. think of going inland in the Philippines. I mean, really. <laughs> yeah, stay on the beach. <laughs> so, uh, like we said, this is an easy crypt plant. Um, I would keep it in some kind of a... Uh, substrate that's designed for aquarium plants. I think it would do fine in Eco-Complete, fine in Fluorite. I have it in sort of a mixed DIY substrate. We've got it in some of the soil substrates. It's not picky as long as it's getting some nutrients or some uh, elements from the soil. Low light, high light, it's gonna adapt to any one of those. Um, crypt melt, I think, doesn't happen quite as frequently with Eusteriana. Crystal actually says that in her 30 years of culturing it, she's never had it have crypt rot. All right, there we go. <laughs> 30 years. I'm only at about 15 on that one, so yeah. she's got me beat. So I yeah. th I'll take her word for it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's good. <laughs> now, I do know with this plant for proper reproduction, those flowers, or inflorescence, because it's technically not a flower, it's a spat. Um, those inflorescences do need to be ab above water in order for them to be pollinated. I don't even know what they're, what pollinating creatures they have. It's got to be something with a really long tongue because those spats are really, really long. Could be mosquitoes. I don't know if they're going to get down there. I think it might be bats. Could be. Yeah. But Maybe I don't know. We're happen. all kind of speculating here. Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely a crypt worth checking out. It's definitely a crypt that if you're looking for that cool background plant and you don't necessarily want to do swords, you don't want something that's going to take over but still going to fill in a space, I think you steer on it is the way to go. And then seeing something that's going to flower and tank is, that's always a plus. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid of big plants. Even in shorter tanks, they still can look beautiful. Right. Uh, the balances that we've got in here, that like arcing over look of a, a long yeah. leaf is so graceful and it elegant. Is, it is a gorgeous look, absolutely. Yep. So do you know what this plant is named after? I don't. Uh, some guy named Eusteria. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Good story, Charles. <laughs> Good story. Wow. That really tells us Nothing more about the plant. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so Usteri, if you're out there, tell us the story of how you discovered it. I guess. Exactly. <laughs> well, it reads right here, and brace yourselves because this is like it goes from zero to a hundred. It's like <laughs> Usteria first collected this crypt near uh, an Buena Vista in 1903, a location that no longer exists today. Wow. I yeah. was like, wow. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> that went from really cool to really sad. <laughs> well, that was a great choice. I love this plant. It is an amazing plant. Yeah. 
What plan should we talk about next? Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and listen to the Watercolors Aquarium Gallery podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Let's have lots of fun. Keep those hands wet. That's funny. Cool. <laughs>